Hey there guys, welcome to the video. Today we're going to have a little look at how to animate constraints on and off using a handy little script called ZV Parent Master. You can download this free off the internet um, and you can of course do this whole thing using constraints normally but you'll get lots of popping and all sorts of issues that you'll then have to sort out so I strongly recommend using it. We're going to have our character here um, pick a sword up from his hip and swing it around so that obviously means that he the sword first needs to be parented or parent constrained to his hip and then after that it will have to be parent constrained to his hand normally this can cause all sorts of problems but uh, I'm hoping that ZV Parent Master will help us sort that out so without further ado let's get into it the first thing I need to move my sword onto his hip. It's a slightly oversized sword for the size of this guy. But animation's always about exaggeration anyway, so we can deal with it. So I'm just going to position him roughly and do terrible animation just so that we can save on time and just demonstrate how to do this. So please excuse if this is crap. Okay, so that's in position. I'm going to key my guy as well. I need to move him into a better position. Or maybe I just leave him as he is, in his T-pose. That's his starting position. It's not the most flattering, but we're going with it. Okay, so now I need to load up our Constraint Master, and that will give you this little toolbar here. If, you d if you're unsure as to what any of these icons stand for, hover over one and then look down the bottom hand corner here and it will tell you what each one does. We've got Attach, Detach, Destroy, Fix Snap, Select Constraints and Constraints Timeline. So they all do different things but we're mostly just going to be concerned with Attach and Detach. So now that my sword is roughly where I want it, I'm going to grab hold of it and attach it to the hips. So I've already created a couple of groups here. One that I want all of the constraints to be applied to and another underneath that will control the sword. So if I need to reposition the sword I've got a, an extra control under there. But you'll see that as as we create uh, constraints with ZV Parent Master it will create extra groups on top to handle the constraints. Okay, so first I select the object I want to constrain, so that's this group, and then I have to select the thing that will drive it. Now, obviously, I'm using a HIK system, so my natural first thoughts would be to grab this control here for his pelvis and parent, it, parent constrain it to this, but that actually drives the joints underneath, so I first had to expose my joints underneath because that is the thing that will actually drive it and therefore that's the thing that we'll constrain it to. So let's grab our sword and then grab our pelvis and let's do our first constraint so click that guy there. So that should have created our constraints. So you see here this was the um, control group that I had before and now we have two extra nodes above it. This one here, sword cons SN, don't worry about what it means, now has a green tick showing that it has a constraint there. So let's let's see if that works. I'm going to move my guy into a position to grab his sword. So I'm just going to not going to worry about the timing. Water keyframe is on, full body. So I'm just going to move his hips, and there we go, the sword is following. Perfect. So I'm going to move him into a position so that he can grab this sword. Don't worry about the strange deformation of the model. Let's get his hand in 
in a decent position. When I say decent, I mean decent enough. <laughs> I said before, I don't want to take too long finessing things, I just want to show you how this works. So we'll call that his grabbing animation. Of course we have the offset control here, so we could always go in and change the position of the sword and whatnot afterwards, but just for now we're going to uh, we're going to carry on with it as it is. So at frame 10 now, we have his hand reaching for the sword. So at this point, I want to detach the constraint from the hips and then attach it to the arm. I'm going to do this over the course of a couple of frames, or one frame really. And the first thing I need to do is grab our sword constraint node that I created and detach it from the hips. So click detach, that should now be detached. And if I click a frame forward, and now I need to grab the hand joint and set a new constraint. Now my hand joint has hidden itself, which is awfully handy, so I need to find it and make it available for me. So I need right hand, go to my, con my attribute editor, and just change the draw style to bone so I can see it. There it is there. Okay, so let's do this constraint. Grab the node for the sword, and then I can shift select the hand, and grab my parent master and create a new constraint. So that should now be getting driven by the hand. The hip still works up until that point, now when I go in and make him pull the sword from its invisible sheath, if all has gone well, it should be attached to his hand. And there it is. Oh, I can't leave his animation quite being so terrible, so I do have to wait a bit. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. That's constraint switching done with ZV Parent Master. If any of you have had to handle the switching of constraints without this tool, you will know that this is an incredibly efficient method and it can save you so many hours. Now if I grab my original constraint and see if I can expose these keys. I find this a bit funny when I work with HIK rigs. There it is. I can see the switching keys there. So currently attached to the hips. Hips are detached. Hand is attached. And there we go. Brilliant. That just about wraps us up. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and take care. Bye bye.